this fantasy sanctuary dfs must plays i'm going to give you five plays who are going to really make your lineups pop this weekend we do this every week i give you five players the stats the facts the reasons that you should be playing them in dfs and how i would approach playing them we're going to get into it straight away let's get going with our first player it is george kittle who's 5100 on DraftKings. George Kittle feasts against teams who are bad against tight ends. I spent the offseason telling people that I wasn't going to draft George Kittle in best ball. And I stand by it because George Kittle hasn't been particularly great so far. But what George Kittle does really well is he beats upon defenses who are really bad against the position. Last year, he scored six of his touchdowns against the Seahawks and the Cardinals, two of the worst teams against the tight end position last year. Well, guess what? He's got the Cardinals this week. Last time he played them, he had four receptions for 84 yards, a touchdown, so two touchdowns. And the Cardinals, they haven't improved whatsoever. They've allowed the third highest receiving yards with 187 to tight ends, the fifth most receptions to tight ends with 17, and sixth highest yards per route run at 11.0. I really do prefer this player if one of Brandon Ayu called Debo Samuel misses out. It feels like a lot of George Kittle's spike weeks really come in those weeks. But if they're both healthy, I'll still be playing him. I think at 5,100, he's kind of in that tier where people don't know whether they want to spend up or if they just want to punt the position and pay down. But the Niners, they rank second in offensive DVOA. They really should be far too much for this sort of feisty Cardinals team to handle. And I'm expecting Kittle to get on the scoreboard and get at least one touchdown this weekend. If you want more DFS content, hit that join button down below. Our Fantasy Sanctuary Discord members, they're enjoying comprehensive write-ups from me. We've got usage suggestions every week about how I'd approach each player, as well as a members-only video where I talk good chalk, bad chalk, cash game cores, and GPP stacks I love. If you choose a golden deck chair package, less than $2 a week, and it'll pay for itself in no time. Let's get to the next player. And it is in the Rams against the Colts game. Puka Nakua at 6700 Puka should be priced up as a 7K receiver. What we've seen from him the last few weeks is incredible. You know, week three felt like a quiet week for Nakua as he only saw seven targets after seeing 35 in weeks one and two combined. But I think he's going to get back into like the double digits this week. He's the wide receiver six in PPR, 32 touches. It only trails Keenan Allen two, and his 2.7 yards per route run is truly elite. Anything over two is a really impressive number there. One Nakua excels at really well is facing zone coverage. He's able to find soft spots and exploit them. Sean McVay is able to find those and scheme him into them as well. And the good news for Nakua is that the Colts play man coverage at the lowest rate in the NFL. They're a zone coverage defense, so he can really exploit that. We don't necessarily need the kind of 30-point haul of week two, but it's well within Nakua's range of outcomes to score 20-plus this week. And at 6,700, he just feels too cheap. This game has a lot of upside, and I'd be happy stacking Anthony Richardson and Michael Pittman with Puka Nakua on the other side of it. I think that's going to be a very effective stack this weekend. Graphics you're seeing on screen, these are taken from our weekly fantasy preview show. It's linked below. We talk about each game from a DFS, Dynasty, and all-around fantasy football perspective. Everything you need to know to get your lineups ready to crush your opponents. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Uh, next one, Zay Flowers at 5,600. Rashad Bateman and Odell Beckham have been ruled out for this sort of AFC North matchup with the Browns. And the Browns' defense looks really legit. But Flowers has shown he's able to separate. He can absolutely shake a defender away and create separation for himself. And he can also find those kind of soft spots in the defense and exploit them. Flowers, he's only behind Debo Samuel in design touches. He's got 13 through three games. His average depth for target or A dot is 4.8. That's an extension of a running game. He's in that short to into like area near the line of scrimmage. He's Lamar Jackson's release valve at the minute. And I think that's something which we shouldn't be afraid of, particularly on DraftKings where it's full PPR. We want to lean into that. We want to take advantage of just racking up easy receptions. The Ravens, their third in offensive explosive play rate. And again, we want that in DFS and fantasy. Explosive rate, it's a play leads to more plays because teams get down the field. They score typically. That puts the other team on the field. Then they have to score. That's a great formula for fantasy. We want more plays, more points. The Browns running game, it's kind of lost a big chunk of it with Nick Chubb. Man, I mean, that sucks. But if we get him more into a pass-heavy script, then it's wheels up for Zay Flowers. 
at 5,600, Flowers isn't going to catch too much ownership this week. There's a lot of good players in that range, which makes him a really appealing play in tournaments. I think you can stack Jackson with Flowers and Andrews, and you've probably got the best parts of that offense this week. And you can run it back with either Amari Cooper or Elijah Moore on the other side of things. Moving on, before we do, if you are enjoying this video, do the right thing. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Each week, I bring you these five favorite plays, and we've got a load of other DFS Dynasty content. We are here to help you win leagues. Let's get on to that next player in the Miami and Buffalo game, the highest over-under of the week at 53.5. Two shaky defenses. We've not seen anything from them to make us think that we should be scared about anything going on here. And I love Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle at 7,600. This is a tournament-only play. Jalen Waddle is back from concussion, cleared protocol. And often when we get players back from concussions, they're treated as if they've got a soft tissue injury and they could have kind of a reoccurrence of it. But that just isn't the case with concussions 99% of the time. Yes, we saw it happen with Tua last year, but that was very much a rare case. So Jalen Waddle is projected for less than 1% ownership in large field formats this week. That's insane for a player with his ceiling. He hasn't really lit up the scoreboard yet because he's not had any touchdowns. But he's had over 75 yards in both games, including week two, where he left slightly early. So I think Waddle's being massively overlooked as people look to Tyreek Hill, who's been lighting it up, as people look to Raheem Moster at 6,500. And the guys on the Bills side at 7,600, I think Waddle is going to be the key to this matchup. And I think you could either use a Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs stack with Jalen Waddle on the other side, or you can go to a with Waddle and Raheem Moster, something like that, and get a little bit weird with it. We have one more player to go, but if you haven't already, hit that like button. Tell me in the comments who is your lock of the week. Which players are you building around? I want to hear it, and I will answer every single question that you leave below. Keenan Allen at 7,900 in this Chargers against Raiders game. There is just, you know, nothing stopping Keenan Allen from being a truly dominant elite wide receiver this year. He's been the wide receiver over one overall for the last two weeks running. The last time he finished outside the top 30 wide receivers at the position was week seven of 2022 when he only played 30% of the snaps. Simply put, like he's just an alpha wide receiver. And with Mike Williams' unfortunate ACL injury, Allen's uptick in usage is only going to get stronger. You look at Josh Palmer and Quentin Johnston, and one of them will have to stand up and take more snaps. We saw enough Josh Palmer last year that doesn't feel like it's going to be him. And Quentin Johnston, there's plenty of question marks about him, and we haven't seen anything to suggest that we need to be jamming him into our lineups right away. Regardless of opposition, though, we're talking about a top 10 wide receiver in Keenan Allen for the rest of the season. Over his last 11 games, he's picked up target totals of 8, 7, 14, 14, 9, 14, 6, 11, 9, 10, and then last week's insane 20 target total. At this salary, we're hoping that Keenan Allen can put up 25 points uh, to really pay off. But so far this year, he's had games where he scored 14, which wouldn't have cut it, 34 and 48. The Raiders' defense is woeful. I mean, we're talking about a team who can't stop anyone. They've surrendered the second most fantasy points to wide receivers at 32.6 per game and allowed the seventh most points to slot receivers that they faced. Keenan Allen can feast in that area. You know, Allen, he's second in total fantasy points among wide receivers with 90.8, third in receiving yards, and now he faces far lesser competition. I think this is absolutely going to be another one of those weeks where you can put Keenan Allen into your cash lineup, where you can put Keenan Allen into any kind of tournament lineup, and you're going to see bang for your buck. If I was playing him in tournaments, I'd stack him with Justin Herbert, take a shot on one of Palmer or Quentin Johnson because they are so cheap. And on the other side of things, I probably want Josh Jacobs in there because it doesn't sound like Jimmy G is going to play. If Jimmy G does play, Jacoby Myers at 5,500 feels great against the Chargers passing defense who haven't been able to stop anyone so far. So that's it. That's your five DFS must plays. Remember, if you want to win, hit that join button down below. It's less than $2 a week for the DFS content. Huge weekly write-up in our Discord. Our members are crushing it over there. They've been really getting great results through the first three weeks of the season, as well as an exclusive DFS members-only video on YouTube where I talk about my cash game core plays, GPP stacks, and how I'm approaching the chalk each week. 
Really want to help more of you win. So hit that join button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll be back next week for more DFS must plays.